Um, so if you go to the Chromium OS uh, site here, you'll see that we have a link, uh, 2014 Chrome OS Firmware Summit. And if you follow this link, you'll get uh, all of our slides. And I really encourage everyone with a laptop to follow along with uh, this presentation in particular, because I, I have a lot of links there that will uh, really show what I'm talking about. So uh, if you have a laptop, um, navigate to the Chromium OS page, follow this link, and uh, check out my slides. Uh, and uh, in my slides, you'll see that I link to a lot of pages, uh, such as this one. Uh, this is just a page for our, uh, our Garrett uh, code review system. And uh, basically, every change list that goes to Chromium OS, you'll, you'll find a corresponding uh, Garrett page like this one. And a lot of information here, but the important stuff is, is, is this, uh, the code here. So you can, you can um, do a, a diff and basically uh, look at this change list and, and see, see what the changes are. So uh, as, as we go along, uh, you'll see I linked to such changes like this to, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, so if everyone's ready, if everyone's ready, then uh, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Sean N. I work on the Chrome OS partner team at Google. Uh, I've been working on a lot of uh, firmware stuff lately, and uh, I've done a lot of uh, uh, mainboard porting lately. Uh, so um, uh, previously, Duncan, Aaron, and uh, Stefan talked about uh, a lot of uh, technical details, but uh, now we're going to get to talk about some more uh, practical details, how to, how to kind of uh, get get some some work done, some tasks that. Uh, that I commonly have to deal with, and uh, you may have to deal with one day too. Um, so, uh, Chromebook mainboard porting is the theme here, and uh, who knows what this means? Anyone? Y you can guess. Go ahead. Oh, not not Duncan. <laughs> uh, you get a prize if you answer right. Uh, okay. Oh, so so mainboard porting is just uh, uh, taking basically some some code for the board that already exists, that already works, and making it work on a board that's uh, quite similar to that board. And uh, in the Chrome OS world, where we start dealing with this kind of porting tasks a lot uh, recently because we've we switched to this kind of uh, reference design model. And so the idea is that uh, we'll, uh, we'll create uh, our own platform, maybe an internal platform, and we'll do a lot of work to, uh, to bring up firmware on this platform. And then uh, we'll encourage our partners to take our reference design uh, and build our own designs with it. And if you look in the past, uh, for Haswell, we had Slippy, which is our internal platform, and uh, it has spawned uh, several uh, shipping Chromebooks. And if you look at uh, Rambi, our internal Baytrail platform, it's starting to uh, spawn some, some Chromebooks, uh, some future Chromebooks as well. And uh, I didn't mention on the slide here, but we also have a, an ARM uh, reference board that's based on the NVIDIA platform. It's called Nyan, and uh, there should be some some more good stuff in the pipeline for, for Nyan. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, having this reference design model lets us uh, not waste engineering resources duplicating the same thing over and over. We, we really like to, to uh, base new designs on reference boards that work. Oops. OK, so uh, uh, let's say that you're given a, a, a new uh, board uh, that's a clone of an existing board. What you want to do is uh, clone the firmware, and uh, you want to derive it from from your reference board. We already have firmware for it that that works. Uh, and one interesting thing is that uh, this this firmware that we're cloning, it uh, it may not live in the in the tip of the Chrome OS tree. So if you uh, you know if you look at uh, basically the the master branch of Chrome OS, the the tip of tree as we call it, you might not see every board there, and that's because uh, many boards just live on their own branch. And uh, one caveat here is that uh, if there are fixes going in to the reference design board, and uh, basically you, you've branched after the point uh, where, uh, uh, where this fix has gone in, then you will need to, to bring in the change to the, reference, to the, to the branched board. And uh, let's, say, let's say you created a, a Haswell platform today, a Haswell board on some branch. Uh, basically, Haswell is very mature. Our Haswell firmware is very mature, so you will not have to do much work. I think maybe one change per month or something. But if you were to like clone Rambi today, uh, you'll have to basically every day you'll have to go and check because there's lots of stuff going in because it's less mature. Uh, okay, so uh, so we talked about core boot a lot in the previous three presentations, 
and uh, core boot has a, a board level folder. Uh, so uh, let's just take a look at the, the core boot structure here. I have a shell uh, open here. And uh, by the way, this is, these are all Chromebooks, so it's, it's kind of cool that you can shell with a Chromebook. People, some people didn't know that you could. We have a SSH in a tab, we call it, and uh, it's, it's working for me quite well here. So you'll see that uh, we have our, our, our tree here, and uh, in the source, we have a lot of docs and you know, um, config files and so forth, but if you look in the source, you'll see lots of, a lot of uh, folders here, and uh, each of these have many subfolders. A, a lot of code to different, support different uh, uh, chipsets, different uh, architectures, and, and so forth. But uh, we're today only, uh, for this presentation, only concerned with this mainboard folder. So in the mainboard folder, you'll see uh, many different vendors. You see like ABIT, I don't think they exist anymore. But you'll see other vendors, and uh, you'll see an important vendor here called Google. And uh, if you check in Google, you'll see um, we have a bunch of boards here. Uh, so we tend to uh, take all of our development boards and just and put them in the Google folder. Basically, we don't want to um, reveal who the OEM is. So when we're when we're working on a board, when it hasn't shipped yet, we'll we'll just put it in the Google folder. And maybe uh, if we get a chance later, we'll move it. But as you can see, we don't always do so. Um, sometimes we just leave it there. Um, okay. So uh, you're looking right here. Uh, let's let's go to the Rambi folder. And uh, so Rambi is our base shell reference platform again. And basically, this is all the board-specific code that should be needed for Rambi. Uh, like if I'm if I'm working on uh, Rambi and let's say I, may, I want to make some change for Rambi uh, that that's specific to Rambi, like I will not go you know spreading my Rambi code all over the source tree. I'll try to make my changes here only. Uh, so. Um, now, in, in, in some cases, maybe you'll need to you know, add support for, let's say, uh, set some new register related to uh, some SATA controller or something. In this case, uh, okay, you'll need to go uh, commit a separate change to, to, the, uh, to, the, to, to read the device tree, you know, set this, set to, to parse the device tree, rather, uh, set this proper register, and then you'll go back and do another change and uh, change your board level. So the point is, like, Rambi code is not oozing out everywhere all over the tree. It's all contained here. And um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, we often put clone firmware on branches. So if, um, if you have some change that's not related to your board, like I just mentioned, um, like a, you know, some, some change where you're uh, modifying the SATA driver to do something different based on device tree setting, you'll want to send the tip, tip of tree. Uh, basically, we... Um, uh, our tip of tree is kind of you know the, the master branch. If it if it doesn't, it's not a tip of tree. A lot of people won't pay attention to it. They won't know it exists. So if you have something uh, useful for other people, we want to send it to tip of tree. And uh, I'll go back to my slides now. Uh, okay, so uh, let's take a look at that uh, that uh, core boot board folder some more, uh, the Rambi folder in particular. So you'll see uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of files here, and, and some are very descriptive. You can probably guess what gpio.c is, for example, um, acpitables.c. You probably know what these are uh, just by reading the file name. And uh, um, we can just take a quick peek, and you know, see that uh, nothing. Whoops, I, actually, it's not formatted too well. That's okay. Uh, all right. So, so you see that. Um, um, it's, it's quite understandable. I encourage everyone, uh, any engineer who's working on this, to just take a look and uh, look at this and, and see what's going on. Uh, you should be able to understand almost everything uh, just because uh, it's, uh, I think it's structured quite well. Uh, all right, so now uh, let's say that we have a task to clone a board. Um, basically, the first thing to do, of course, is to just, uh, just copy your, your existing board. So if I had to clone Rambi, I'd, I'd take the Rambi board folder, copy it, and just rename the folder. And at that point, I'd go and uh, rename some strings. So I'd see, you'll see some Rambi strings there, just change it to your board name. Uh, now, uh, if you look at my reference CLs at this point, you'll see that uh, we do this quite frequently, two examples. And uh, what I like to do after, after I just, you know, um, cp-r the, 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 the folder, I'll, I'll commit at this point. Uh, the reason is it's, it's easy to, you know, to make a mistake later, and uh, it's always good to have the history, complete history. Uh, okay, I, I copied the board at this point, then I added my custom changes. So later, so we can go back and, and see exactly what, what I did. If I start adding my own things at this point, and then commit, 
well, it's kind of all lumped together and it's hard to see what, uh, what my work is and what the, what the copied work was. So um, any questions up to this point? Question? Oh, uh, so the question is, uh, is, is there uh, some uh, infrastructure being planned to, uh, to make this uh, easier, make this process easier? Is that kind of the, the, what I heard? Or at least if there isn't plans for it, is that at least a recognized name? Uh, well, uh, one thing about, uh, uh, well, we do end up like moving code from branch to branch quite frequently. And uh, it, is, it is not uh, too tough a task, you know, with just uh, well, you have, you know, you have, your, you have your Git history, you can just cherry pick changes onto the branch you want. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've often thought about writing such a tool for, for some tasks like this. But in the end, I think there are enough uh, small differences, like between board to board, architecture to architecture, that the entire task can't be automated. Like this, this cloning task, you know, of course you can automate it. Uh, but in the end, I think it will not save you too much time. Because basically, this is a two minute task. And we don't do it, we do it somewhat often, but not, you know, not. Not every day, usually. So, uh, answer your question. Uh, okay. The rest of it take okay, sure. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Um, so, uh, right now, I suggest you look at these reference CLs. Uh, okay, and uh, a second task that's common will be to uh, change your GPIOs. So, whenever I get a new board, uh, the first question that I always ask is what's the schematic diff? Uh, so I'd, I'll hold up the schematics and say, okay, here's what uh, the changes are from the, from the CPU or the chipset point of view. And um, basically, for each uh, I.O. that changes, probably you'll need to uh, have a corresponding change in your GPIO table. Um, so um, you'll, you'll see that for every architecture, every uh, chipset, you'll see that uh, we specify GPIOs a little bit differently. So you may need to go back to the chipset code to see like, okay, what exactly is this uh, GPIO input 10K PD, PD? What does that mean? And you can kind of dig through the code and, and figure it out. There's no real standard way to write these kind of macros, but um, uh, you can always reference the, the, the chipset code to see what's happening. Uh, and uh, another common task uh, lately has been to uh, uh, get the, uh, the, the, the DRAM uh, RAM ID configured correctly. So uh, these days, we aren't shipping too many Chromebooks that have uh, DIM modules. So there's no SPD ROM, and yet uh, we still need to get the, uh, the SPD data so we can, we can, uh, we can bring in memory uh, correctly. So what we do usually is have, uh, have some strapping GPIOs, and uh, based on the strapping GPIOs, we select a different uh, uh, SPD. Um, and uh, this, this varies you know, widely across platforms. If you look at you know, four or five or six different Tazewell platforms, you'll see like every, uh, every platform has a different set of, um, uh, of DRAM SKUs. So th this is uh, definitely something that needs to be changed if you don't have DIMMs. And uh, next, uh, you need to customize the device tree. So I think uh, Aaron and Duncan talked about the device tree quite a bit. Uh, basically, you'll see you know uh, some some custom settings for things like your SATA controller. You, you'll be able to uh, enable or disable different different ports from there, uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, for, for for devices that change or or uh, customizations you need to make, you need to look to the device tree. Uh, and uh, another point here is the uh, the ACPI tables. So uh, for, for certain devices, we need to inform the OS of, of the, the fact that the device exists and, uh, and how it's uh, connected to the system. So typically, for, for I2C devices, you'll see that uh, we, we, we define which uh, port, for example, port of the uh, I2C controller it's connected to. We'll define a slave address there uh, so that the OS uh, can communicate with it correctly. And another item is uh, thermal here. So. Um, uh, typically, we'll, we'll define some thermal zones. Basically, based on the temperature, we'll, uh, we'll define certain fan levels. And this is um, wildly different based upon, upon uh, platform. 
every every platform has its own uh, own you know uh, cooling uh, profile, different fans. So always need to change this. And uh, finally, sometimes there's just some miscellaneous things that that ended up end up in in the board level. Uh, a common one we've had to deal with lately is uh, programming the MAC address on our uh, network interface controller. And it turns out that the best, the, the, the easiest way to do this is, is to do it in firmware. Um, and another common thing is to have to customize your verb table uh, for your audio codec based upon your, uh, your inputs and outputs you're using for your ship. All right, so now that we have a good idea about uh, what we need to do, let's go try and port some firmware. So uh, we have a new task here, and the task is to create a board, and the board is called Ergot. And uh, it's a Rambi-like platform, and it has a few special characteristics. And, uh, so it's exactly like Rambi, except it has no WLAN card, no Wi-Fi card, and uh, there are only two I2C devices on this device. It has a, a trackpad and an I2C codec, but there is no ALS and there's no touchscreen. And also, uh, there is no SATA support, so it has an EMMC uh, hard disk, EMC disk, and uh, uh, there, uh, there's only basically two RAM SKUs. They both use the same, uh, same module, uh, single or dual channel. So it's basically uh, a very simple version of Rambi. And uh, what we're going to do here is actually um, port this firmware. So, um, so step one is to is to clone. So uh, if I'm if I'm cloning Rambi here, I can just uh, Oh, by the way, so if you look here at the link I have, um, if you have on your laptop there, you can just follow this link and you'll see the exact code that I'm, I'm creating right now. So, so we're, we're, we're cloning Rambi to ergot at this point. So I'll just uh, cp-r Rambi ergot. And uh, there we go. There my, there's my ergot, uh, ergot main board created. Okay. So uh, then we'll want to change our strings. So if we, if we look at this code, let's take a look and see... Uh, Let's see where we, we have uh, the Rambi string. Okay, so kconfig, this is important. This is a, a file that's used during build. So basically we want to change uh, this, where we check this uh, Rambi defined, we want to change that to our board name, which is ergot. And uh, is there anywhere else? That's, oops. Okay. And here's another important place. This defines our main board directly, directory, rather. So we we'll want to change this to ergot as well. And let's see what else we have. Uh, oh, there was one more place. Okay. So right now, it's a very easy job. We're just copy code and we're just changing strings. Okay, so we did it to kconfig, but we can easily do it to the other, the rest of the code there. Um, so what we do at this point is, uh, is uh, commit our code. So, whoops, I don't like this editor. So, so what I'm doing here is just uh, committing the code I just cloned. So I'll give it a title. Uh, initial main board commit. I'll have a description here. What the? Okay, that's interesting. All right. Uh, and then uh, I'd reference a bug number, I'd reference a uh, test that I did, and uh, I, I'd, I have my change here. So if I get log, there's my change, and I'd upload it to Garrett. Uh, and now, now that we just uh, copied and uh, changed strings, I'm ready to go to the next step. And, uh, and what was the next step? The next step is GPIOs. Okay, so remember now, um, Remember our differences from ergot to Rambi. Our difference is it has no WLAN card, there are two I2C devices, uh, no SATA support, and only one RAM ID. So uh, knowing this, let's see what changes we need to make to our GPIO table. Uh, okay, so this is Rambi, and it's a Bay Trail platform, and there are actually three GPIO banks. So it's a little bit more complicated than, than some of the other platforms, uh, where you can think of it as like one, one bank. But here we have three banks. So let's, let's, uh, let's pay attention to our WLAN signals first. So here we have, okay, uh, PCIe clock request WLAN. Well, we won't need this anymore. Uh, we can confirm on the schematic, but uh, if we check the schematic, we'll see that it's probably gone. So we'll change it to not connected. 
and uh, we see, okay, we have a suspend clock. Well, we don't need that for sure. So let's change that to not connected. And uh, by the way, you know, of course, you'd be referencing the schematic. You wouldn't be just making these changes, but you'll say like, oh, uh, GPIO, uh, SGPIO, uh, SUSGPIO 5 is, is no, not connected now. So I better change the GPIO table here. And same thing here. We don't need to wake our uh, wake on WLAN anymore. Uh, that, there's no signal there, so let's just change that. Uh, and uh, you get the idea. Um, another one is, is RAM ID. So for RAMV, we, we support up to uh, eight DRAM SKUs, but we no longer need that for our uh, ERGOT platform. So these, uh, these RAM IDs wouldn't be, GPIOs wouldn't be connected at all. So we'll just change these to not connected. And we'll, go have, to, we'll have to make um, some more changes later, maybe, to support uh, you know, these differences. But from the GPIO table point of view, this is all we need to do. And you might find some other things here, like in the GPIO table, like here we have a, uh, an IRQ set up basically for the, for the um, touch controller. We wouldn't need this. And for the ALS, we wouldn't need this either. Um, so that's, that's kind of the idea there. So any questions up to this point? No? A oh, question? Uh, so your question is, uh, we're cloning a board, so won't there be a lot of redundant code lying around? And the answer is, uh, there is some. But we really try to uh, reduce the amount of redundant code. Like, for example, uh, if you look at this GPIO table, I'd say it's not, definitely not redundant. Because uh, for every platform, basically, uh, we cannot count on any GPIO being identical to another one. Uh, but if you look at some of the other code, uh, especially, I think, the ACPI code, you'll see that uh, for Rambi, there is a lot of duplicate uh, verbiage that basically we could factor out. And we do make efforts to factor this out. And all the time, we're making it better. So, so it's definitely one thing we, we try to do and one thing we're doing always. Uh, but if, if you compare, let's say, look at like the chipset level code, uh, in this case, the Baytrail level code, SOC level code, versus like the board level code, you'll see there's much more uh, code to support the SOC than there is to support your main board. So basically, we've already done a pretty good job. Of, uh, of, of taking this redundant code and putting it at a higher level than the board, a lower level than the board, rather. Make sense? OK. Uh, any more questions? OK. So uh, in that case, uh, we can move to our, um, to our next task here. So our next task uh, will be to take care of the, uh, the RAM ID strapping. Uh, so in, in Rambi's case, uh, in Rambi's case, we have this SPD folder here, and uh, you'll see that we have uh, several uh, SPD data blobs defined, and we have a make file here that just uh, includes them all. Uh, so for this platform, we only have one GPIO, so instead of eight, uh, instead of three, we have one, so we can just... Uh, we don't need these other three definitions, and we see that uh, according to our um, according to our instructions, we we have a single or dual channel uh, micron uh, memory. So let's just uh, let's use the same SVD config, the same micron one uh, twice. And uh, this is probably not the most efficient way to do things, but we'll just copy the the template that Rambi used, and we can make it better later if we want. And let's just change the comment here to reflect what we actually have. We'll say uh, RAM ID 0 is dual channel, and uh, RAM ID 1 is single channel. Oops. All right. So now that we've changed that, we can go ahead and you know, delete all these uh, SPD blobs that we don't need. So let's just. Uh, Let's delete this one. We don't need it. Uh, let's delete these Hynix ones since they're not part of our uh, platform. OK. And uh, one, one level up at the board level, we'll see that uh, in uh, ROM stage.c, we are we're, we're, we're dealing with the GPIOs here. So again, we'll want to you know, update this comment to reflect what we actually have in our board and change the code around a bit. So you know we have this um, this mask that indicates which config is dual channel. In our case, it's only the first one, so we can delete the rest. They don't exist. And uh, we see we only have one GPIO, so we don't care about these anymore. We might um, 
we don't need to disable pull-ups on these pins that are not connected. And I think if we, if we do something like this, basically, we'd be working at this point for our, uh, our SPD strapping. And um, if you check my change list I put up, I did basically just this. So uh, that's that's kind of a, this is kind of a really a really simple easy example. Uh, typically, you know, you're gonna have more than, than two SKUs using the same module. All right. Uh, so the next step will be uh, to modify your device tree. And let's take a look at one of these device trees. Since we've talked about device trees a lot today, let's let's take a look at this one closely. Uh, so we have uh, okay this this. Uh, this chip identifier that identifies uh, uh, what what, what uh, items we're setting here, and we'll see there's a lot of SATA stuff here. Actually, uh, I think I think we should get rid of this for Rambi because in Rambi we actually don't have a SATA port anymore. So I should uh, file a to do on myself to get rid of this old stale code on Rambi. But for our platform, we definitely don't have a SATA port, so I'm just going to delete this. We don't care about these anymore. And uh, you'll see there's a lot of um, USB port configuration here. Uh, for now, we'll just leave it as it is. Uh, we'll see there's some GPU configuration stuff. And uh, okay, so in, in our case, uh, remember we said that there are two I squared C ports, uh, basically port, port zero and port two, or port one and port three, depending on how you're counting, base zero or base one. So we'll want to uh, enable port one, enable port three, and uh, disable the others. All right. And uh, we mentioned there's no Wi-Fi card. So uh, we have two PCIe ports enabled here. Uh, and I happen to know that the first one, uh, port zero, is the one that's normally used for Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to disable that. Of, of course, you know, if you probably normally wouldn't know this by heart, so you just have to reference the schematic and see how, see where the Wi-Fi card was, see where it isn't now, see, see which uh, port is not connected. And, uh, and at this point, uh, I might be done with the device tree modification uh, for now. So now that you've seen a device tree, any questions here? Question? Uh, actually, we already have support for EMMC. Uh, and the question is, uh, so let, um, is there anything device tree related to EMMC? I don't think there is. Uh, maybe we, we might initialize the controller. We might turn on the uh, controller here. Uh, this, this, this MMC controller, I think. This device. It's actually already on. Because in Rambi, um, we, we support SATA and EMMC. We've kind of phased out SATA. So we already support it, actually. So it's, it's quite easy. But, but if it wasn't, we'd, we'd you know, enable the controller here. And then we'd go to our GPO table and uh, enable the proper pins here. You'll see that we already have these configured. So um, maybe I should have talked about this a bit before, but you'll see that you know uh, here we have we're defining a GPIO kind of uh, in a in a real uh, funny way. Bhrail has has uh, every for every pin basically uh, you can define up to seven functions. So what we have here this this long macro GPIO func three pull down twenty. Okay, it's basically you know a, a specialized uh, configuration of the pin to support our uh, our EMMC. And for every, for, uh, go ahead, Ron. Oh, sure. Uh, the register statements? Yeah. So sometimes people get the impression that those have to be just like numbers, but they can be any expression of C code that would get evaluated at compile time. Like they can even include a size of, you know, or, or like C preprocessor Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, if in case you didn't hear what Ron said, uh, Ron mentioned that these uh, these register uh, declarations here can be any C expression, not necessarily just a number. But it, it can't. It won't be a function because it's a struct initializer, but it will be anything that you could have in a C initializer. So. I see. So uh, they can't be functions, but uh, they can be anything you can have as a C initializer. And uh, if you're curious to see um, how these could work, you can you can um, you can kind of search the code for for um, for some of these registers and see see how they're working in the uh, in the SOC level code. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so uh, now that our device tree is, uh, is filled out, uh, our next step might be to uh, modify our ACPI tables. And um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, duplicate, you know, some cruft here that we should probably uh, clean up a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, we have this, in Rambi, we have this file onboard.h, and basically we, uh, we define some, some uh, constants here that we'll use in the ACPI code later. Uh, now we know that we don't have a touch screen anymore, so I think we can get rid of this. And uh, for example, we don't, uh, we don't have a uh, MLS anymore, so we can get rid of this. And then if we look in the ACPI folder here, uh, you'll see a bunch of uh, ASL files. And in mainboard.asl, you usually find uh, things very specific to your mainboard. So here we're defining a, uh, a lid structure for for the lid and for the trackpad, uh, we're, we're defining some resources for the trackpad and then for the touch screen. Uh, so we'd want to remove all this touch screen code. We can just get rid of it, probably. Uh, and and here's our here's our touchpad. Uh, and you'll see that uh, okay we defined uh, okay slave address, uh, you know some some speed information, some protocol information, um, the, the, the controller port it's using. Uh, an IRQ number and and that's it. Uh, okay, so you see we have we have two touchpad def, uh, uh, entries here, and our, our our board probably only needs to support one. So we could probably we could probably get rid of one of these, depending on which which uh, one our board is going to ship with. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, Duncan says that we need to have both because the touchpad comes up in different modes sometimes. Okay, good to know. Uh, all right, if we have no touchpad, so we could uh, go ahead and uh, uh, strike this code. And uh, we, we, uh, we moved around our codec. We moved our codec to, to the third uh, I2C port. So we better change that. Better change, better change it here as well. And uh, let's see, this is the this is for the ALS. We have no ALS, so I think we can uh, safely go to this code. You know, so ERGOT's a very simple example. We're doing a lot of deleting, not a lot of writing. But um, sometimes it's the case. This looks like the touch screen. We don't have a touch screen on our system. Okay, so uh, at this point we'd, uh, we'd, we'd maybe need to make a few more changes, as you can see in the, the changes I put up, but uh, We'd, we'd almost be done here. And uh, in my uh, previous slides, I mentioned you know making some miscellaneous customizations. Let's say we don't have any of these in ergot, so at this point we'd basically be finished. Uh, so we could uh, we could build our firmware, you know, commit our changes, and we'd have something to start from, something that would boot on our platform that uh, we could start from. And of course, you know, I'm sure that uh, we're going to have to we'll have to make more changes, maybe you know, uh, changes specific to like um, trace links and so forth, you know, changing from registers based on this. Uh, but, uh, but at this point we have something that boots probably at least. So we're good to go. Uh, so uh, we can almost ship our platform. And uh, yeah, almost. <laughs> so uh, any, any questions? Uh, uh, question. Okay, so the the question was uh, the uh, the Chrome OS build environment is pretty complex, and uh, a lot of little things you need to do to to build uh, your firmware, and uh, I didn't really cover that here, uh, but we have a presentation. The last presentation of the day is going to cover a lot of this stuff, so uh, look forward to that. Um, so we just covered right now the core boot changes, and uh, you know, building core boot is much easier than building all of Chrome OS firmware. Uh, if you wanted to build just core boot, which I don't recommend, you do inside Chrome OS. You could, you know, check the check the core boot uh, 
coreboot.org and, and see how that build system works. But uh, in Chrome OS, we kind of like abstract everything, and we have our own build system that builds all the components for you, which has a lot of little pitfalls. So, so again, uh, to find out about these pitfalls, see the last presentation of the day. Uh, okay, so any uh, question? Aaron? Uh, comment? Sean had uh, made a comment about some of the GPL configuration not always being consistent, and uh, really that's more reflective of the hardware capabilities. So hardware people, uh, the more you change, the more it always looks different, um, and there goes your consistency. Uh, additionally, I think to Josh's question about um, maybe making some of this less painful, I think what you're possibly alluding to is the ability to essentially, for lack of a better term, inherit a board that's like a base class board and makes slight tweaks. Uh, that would definitely be a, a great extension with respect to duplicating stuff, but um, I don't know that anyone has any plans yet, but that would be ideal, at least for minimizing the duplication and, you know, the, you know, sort of uh, uh, redundant sort of work of just moving stuff around. Uh, just respect to Rambi references within the source code under the main board, or? Oh, how to uh, reconcile changes from Rambi going forward back into this. No, it does not. Um, yeah, I don't really have a great solution to that at the moment, but yeah. Note taken. Uh, okay, any more questions? Uh, so uh, w there is uh, about you know, 15 more minutes scheduled in this, in this uh, presentation, and I do have a shell open here, so if you have any, like, uh, you know, more fine-grained questions about uh, code here and there, we can maybe talk about it for 14 minutes. Question. Oh, uh, sure, sure. So uh, uh, for this, uh, I'll show you exactly how it works, but uh, I'd like to reference uh, one of the CLs I linked here, and uh, that is this, this clone CL. So I'll just pull it up here, and then we'll, we'll look at it ourselves. So we'll see we have this, uh, this config file, basically config.boardName. And uh, inside here, we'll see that uh, we, uh, okay, we, 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 we reference certain binaries, and then uh, also, at the board level, uh, you'll see that we also have a, uh, a kconfig. And, and here is, uh, okay, and here we point uh, to our, there it is, whoops, here it is. There, whoops. Okay, here we go. And you'll see that uh, our board specific options are here. Uh, for example, Baytrail. Whoops. Whoops. It's a it's a Baytrail platform. Uh, it's a Chrome OS device. It uses EC Software Sync and a few other things like this. Uh, so, does that answer your question? Uh, right. Uh, so I think uh, uh, beyond the the limited uh, kconfig uh, line or two that you might find, uh, I don't think we document many of these uh, options. Um, but uh, some of, I, I could be wrong. Uh, maybe if we check corbu.org, you might find some documentation there. Sure. Yeah. sure. Uh, question. Oh, uh, so this is called uh, SSH in a tab. It's a, it's a Chromium plugin, and it's, uh, you should be able to just get it from the Chromium store. Uh, let me see if I can give you some more information here. Oh, oh. Uh, so 
Uh, Alt T, control. Oh, th so this is, um, this is different though. This is different. This is cross shell, right? So this is, this is something else. This is actually the shell on this machine. But you're asking how, to, like, how can I put an SSH session, right? Is that your question? How can? Uh, yeah, it, we're, in, we're in dev mode though. I think we can't get out to the, the uh, no, what? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, interesting. I didn't know it was support here. Interesting. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Learn something now. Is this SSH connected to the plugin at all? Or no? Not at all. Okay, interesting. I had no idea. Oh, uh, got it. Okay, okay. So the NACL extension is a shortcut to, to this kind of. Okay, understand. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, so answer to your question is uh, every Chromebook ships with a SSH client and it's easy to access. Just control alt T and then SSH. Yeah. Okay, uh, any more questions? All right, I think uh, I'll cut the presentation short then. I think next up will be uh, Gabe with a presentation on depth charge. And so thanks everyone for uh, listening. <laughs>